Hi, this is Mark from LongIslandWatch.com, and today we're going to be looking at some Vostok Europe watches. Fun fact about Vostok Europe, I'm actually the first person to carry them uh, in the United States going back soon after I launched my business, sometime around 2005, 2004 maybe. I partnered up with a guy over in Moscow and brought these in to sell online. And then years later, uh, they found a U.S. distributor, a uh, guy you've probably seen on TV a bunch of times. Uh, and then I kind of phased out. And then years ago, we met up again, and I wanted to give the brand a swing and been carrying it ever since. I, when I think of Vostok Europe, I think bold. I usually think big, too, but there's some pieces that aren't tremendous. But they're bold pieces that make a hell of a statement. Gorgeously done dials and cases. I uh, affordable, mostly under a thousand, just really nice. Uh, they are the Vostok Europe has nothing to do with the Vostok Watch Company. The Vostok Watch Company is a Russian company. Vostok Europe is from Vilnius, which is in Lithuania. Uh, that's where their factory is, or that's where the company is headquartered. Uh, they make a variety of watches, quartz, auto, complicated, simple. Uh, but all of them have this statement about them. Um, they're modeled after usually some sort of event or vehicle, as you'll see in a lot of them. And like I said, they're just bold. You know, when you look at them, you just say, wow, that's a watch. I mean, it's definitely a conversation started, to say, to say the least. Uh, if it's not for you, then that's great. It's not for you. But, you know, check them out anyway and see what's going on. Uh, my own wish, I'm only wearing one watch today. Uh, and it is, I'm not sure if I've ever so, shown this one. That's a Casio G-Shock. It's a solar with the uh, atomic clock built in, five different frequencies. Reverse display, which, you know, it takes some getting used to, which just means the numbers are white and the LCD is black. Uh, but this, this is the beach watch for me. Uh, I was at the beach. And uh, it's funny, Long Island's got hundreds of miles of beach, but... I go a few times a year, uh, but this is the one that literally is in the sand digging with my kids, uh, and I got to look at the time, and I actually have to take the sand and scrub it off the crystal to read it. You know, I get home, I can't even undo the clasp because it's got sand in it, and I kind of work it out and I get it off and rinse it, rinse it off, and it lives to fight another day. Uh, Amazingly built pieces, uh, you know, all Casio G-Shocks are. Casios uh, in general usually are very good. But anyway, this video is about Vostok Europe. So uh, let's uh, get over to the table and check out five Vostok Europes I have waiting for you. So we're going to start with, I guess, the biggest watch that I'm going to show you today. This is the Lunokhod 2 Automatic. It's a 300-meter water-resistant dive watch, complete with a helium escape valve. And it also has some tritium markers. Now, what makes this watch super cool and special, as I tilt the watch, you can see that the dial certainly has a lot of depth. All these watches I'm going to show you have a decent amount of uh, dial depth to them. You can see it's fabricated of many, many pieces, but we're going to zoom in on the markers that are used for the uh, hour markers, the tritium tubes for the hour markers, and you'll see something really cool. So if you can see the tritium tubes are actually standing on end. They are pointing up, and they're in little metallic bowls, so, so-called candle holders. And that gives, uh, the, the tritium tubes give off light, the bowl picks up the light and reflects it, and it gives a much bolder uh, view of the tritium that you would get if it was just laying down. Like the hands have normal tubes, and you can see the tubes on the hour and minute hands, and those give off light also. Now, I'll go over tritium really quickly. I covered this in another video about uh, what makes tritium light different than passive illumination. And I think I'm going to do it again on a, on a watch and learn, guys. But uh, basically, tritium is active illumination. It's radio illumination. Each little tube is filled with radioactive gas. The gas interacts with a coating on the tube, and it gives off light. I believe two of them I'm going to show you today or maybe three of them are tritium lit. Uh, some Vostoks are tritium lit, some aren't. But let's just keep rotating the case around. And you can see it's got beautiful engraving on the case back. Super solid. This is 49 millimeters in diameter. It's 54 uh, from lug tip to lug tip. 
and it is a stout 17 millimeters thick. I mean, it is certainly a beast, way too big for my wrist. Uh, wonderfully clicking, ratcheting bezel. Just a really nice piece altogether. And look at the detail that goes into the engraving of the item number, 6205210. And then the series number, the, the serial number of the limited edition series. Uh, a lot of these are limited editions, and they do number them. Uh, it's a very simple watch. Otherwise, I mean, here's your crown. You can see here. Uh, it's for, you know, changing and setting the time. It is an automatic. It runs on Seiko's NH35 movement, which is a 24 joule automatic movement. I believe it's analog is the 4R35 in Seiko land. Uh, obviously, it's a brick of stainless steel. It's got a hardened K1 mineral crystal. It's on this nice, you see it matches the case, the, the, the strap, this rubber strap is molded to the case. It does actually come with an extra leather strap in the case. It comes in a Pelican case, one of those large dry cases. Sign buckle, nice strap. You know, you can see holding it in hand. It is, it's super, you know, super duty, so to speak. This guy is going to retail around $749. I believe it's the most expensive one I'm going to show you. I also believe it is quite possibly the most impressive from a build standpoint. Like I said, when you get in there and you look at the dial detail, it is simply amazing. So let's flip out the lights and see what tritium does. So you can see where, you can see my thumb, where the uh, indices are. That glowing you see, and then there's a little dot in the middle. The tube is the dot in the middle, and then the glowing you see is actually the reflection off the candle holder. Really cool. I don't know if they were the first people to do this. I know others are doing it now, uh, but still excellent technology. If I tilt it and, and bring it in, you can see the tubes standing straight up but then when I go like this all of a sudden it turns into a circle it's like a little magic trick anyway super cool certainly uh, no problem seeing these in any kind of light these are you can see at the bottom of the dial H3 which means it's radioactive and they are T25 so it's 25 millicuries of uh, radiation inside each tube so now working our way down the line we come up to a quartz watch now I apologize there is uh, some protection on these these you know looks like a car and a car carrier a little bit doesn't it when you see them on the road and they cover up the painted surfaces but uh, this is obviously to protect it so it doesn't scratch it's not just like a peel and remove sticker like a crystal sticker so I don't want to remove it uh, but it's this nice rose gold case gold colored dial this is a gas limo all timer with a one hour chrono this is model number 565 B290 and this runs on Seiko's YM86 movement. As I flipped around, you can see the case back. Again, the case backs are done really nice on all of these. Oddball 23 millimeter strap. The strap conforms to the case. But um, I was going to get away from myself. I did a Seiko video a while ago on a perpetual calendar. It was actually, I believe, a watch and learn what is a perpetual calendar. Uh, very similar, if not the same exact movement, is in this watch. So we can figure out how it operates. A perpetual calendar will basically keep the time, date, and day of the week uh, ad nauseum into infinity. We know it's not entirely true because in the year 2100, there will not be a leap year. But still, it will keep time for many, many years. And after that correction, it will be correct for another, you know, three or 400 years or so. Uh, so right now, the watch is showing the time, has an alarm at the bottom sub-dial, and it's showing at the top of the dial... You can see the day of the week. I love zooming in on their watches because look at the look at the detail of the dial. Look at the layers. You know, whenever I see Vostok Europe at the trade shows, uh, you know, a lot of you guys might know Craig Hester. Uh, you see him on TV. They always have the cases of the watches, the cases of the watches and the dials. Everything's disassembled and laid out on the table because you really can't see that online. And you can see it now. I mean, look at the work that goes into this. It's not a simple construction. Look how tall it is. All the different layers come into play. So they keep it apart so you can see all the uh, intricate parts that go into the case. But anyway, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to flip it back up. You've probably already figured out this is a, another tritium-powered watch. Uh, you can see the tubes on the hands and the markers. I'm going to zoom out, and we'll show you how it works real quick. So to get the perpetual calendar to work right now, you can see at the top it's showing Friday. And this bracket on the second hand, if I can get the angle right, is showing the 30th. Today is indeed June 30th. 
I press this top button once, and the bracket, this bracket right here, moved over to 06. That's June. I press it again. We are at leap year plus one, which means we're one year after leap year, which is true. And if I just let it go, it will go back to regular, just displaying the date through that bracket. If I press the bottom button, this little top indicator switches over to chronograph. The seconds hand comes up, tells us it's ready to roll. And I press the top button, I have a regular chronograph. Anyway, the, this is again uh, the Gaz Limo Old Timer. And this is around $599 comes in all sorts of other uh, shapes and not shapes and sizes comes in all sorts of other colors uh, so this one's 45 millimeters getting a little bit smaller it's 14 millimeters thick 53 millimeters from tip to tip it's a uh, 50 meters water resistant and retains a, a k1 mineral crystal like the old one like the one I just showed you before and it's got the tritium illumination so this is standard t25 illumination Never needs charging. It will stay like this for many, many, many years. Never needs to see daylight uh, to remain lit up. If I could wear a 47 millimeter watch, this is the one I would wear. Uh, this is the Expedition North Pole Chronograph. So it's a two eye chronograph. Very simple. Uh, it's a Miyota Quartz movement. It's a 6S21 PVD uh, plated case. It's 47 millimeters, like I said, and it's 18 thick. So it is, you know, it's a beefy watch. It's a bulky watch. Uh, it's normal chronograph operation. I don't think you really need to see it. Uh, but just overall, look how they made it. Look at the strap, this leather strap with the double prongs and the blue accent line running through it to pick up the blue on the dial. Matching uh, buckle. This is model number 5954198. It's 200 meters water resistant. And it is $329 has the anti-reflective K1 mineral crystal. Look at, again, look at the case back. Look at all the work that goes into the case back. You don't see that on a lot of watches. They, they really pay attention to a lot of the detail. You know, this would be the watch that I would wear if I could do the size. I'll try it on at the end. It's probably going to be too big for me. You know, most of these, if not all of these, are probably uh, too large for me. Well, exception of one more coming up, I could probably pull off. Now, let's take a look at the luminescence of this. This is not tritium, so this is regular passive illumination like Super Luminova, uh, but it'll glow well. Look at that. You can easily read it. Yeah, it's not a Seiko, but definitely readable, very legible. Well built. Great looks, bold. You're never going to meet anyone else that's got a watch like something like this. I mean, I, I can say that with pretty good certainty, uh, unless you hang out with a bunch of watch people. And, and if you do, maybe you need something else to do with your time. Now, this one gets the award for functionality. This is another gas limo. This is a World Time GMT. This is a really cool watch with a lot of functionality. It's running on another Seiko movement, the YM26 which is a world time movement. It's also got an alarm, as you can see down here. Alarm subdial and a date. Let's just go over the specs quickly. It's 43 millimeters. This is a watch I, I could wear. 14 thick, again, with the, uh, with the auto transport tape. Uh, and it's 51 tip to tip. Solid uh, stainless steel, as you can see, with a high polish on it. Anti-reflective mineral crystal. You can see the, the haze that... Uh, the greenish haze when I start to rotate it through the fluorescent light. 22 millimeter lug, regular buckle closure, 50 meters water resistance. So what's so cool about this watch? Well, let's zoom in. You can see at the top it says local time, and then this red arrow here is pointing to New York. So the two dials are in sync. The I am in New York, so the local time and the dial time here, the main dial time are the same. But as you press the top and button pusher, I'll zoom out a bit, now it's Halifax, and it's an hour ahead. Buenos Aires, Trinidad, and you see it keeps going, and that little hand keeps moving around. And what's cool is that they have Vilnius on here instead of the usual, I don't know what the city that generally denotes the time zone is, but it's funny because Vostok Europe is from Vilnius and Lithuania, and that's the city they put on the dial, so good for them uh, for being proud of where they are. It looks like a chronograph, but it's not. It's this cool world time watch with an alarm. So this is definitely a good traveler's watch, uh, without a doubt. Uh, we'll do a loom shot in a second. You see they have their own straps, branded, matching buckle. And this one's also 329 I don't know if I said that. So same price as the uh, chronograph I just showed you, the 2i chronograph. Uh, but 
Uh, I, I think that for a traveler, alarm in world time. And what else does a traveler need? What a great, you know, what a great uh, duo of functionality. So let's see what it looks like at night. This is not tritium powered. It's normal passive luminescence. So it's readable. It's got super loom or whatever kind of compound on it to uh, make it glow in the dark. It's certainly readable in my not too dark, dark studio. Uh, but great looking watch. Again, this one sells me on, on the functionality easily. I mean, that's it. So the last one I'm going to show you is another auto. This is a gas limo uh, gray dial automatic. Again, with tritium light, this has still has the that Seiko uh, movement in it, uh, that NH movement. It's a nice looking watch with the rose gold tone case, you know, coated over uh, stainless steel. It's a 45 millimeter watch, it's 14 and a half millimeters thick, and it's around 51 from tip to tip. So getting up there in size again, anti-reflective uh, mineral crystal, and this contoured strap like you saw in a lot of the other ones that matches the case. I mean, you could still replace it with, other, with, with whatever kind of strap you want uh, that, that fits the case. It is 23 millimeters, so I have a little bit of a tough time finding an aftermarket, uh, but Vostok Europe certainly sells a lot of straps that you know you could fit onto the watch. Uh, solid stainless steel, as you can see, and coated over with that rose gold. So it's still the, it's the same T25 tritium that we saw before. So it glows, doesn't need light to charge it up. It'll glow for years uh, without any uh, interruption from light. And keep it in a dark closet for two years. Check it out after two years, it's still going. Uh, this one is an automatic, like I said, so it, it's a little more expensive. This is $489, uh, so kind of like in the middle of the pack of the rest of them. Uh, but still, just a very nice dress watch, very elegant, very simple, easy to read, cool looking watch. So I'm not going to try on all of them because some of them are obviously way too big for me. You know, my wrist is six and three quarters, but here's the Gaz Limo World Time with Alarm. This one was uh, 43 millimeters, I believe, and it fits great. No problem. I would wear it without issue. You can see the lugs are pretty short and it fits on my wrist perfectly. And man, like I said, this one just screams function. You know, it's not functional or form though because the, the, the form is pretty darn nice. And then just for fun, that Expedition Chronograph at 47 millimeter, uh, probably too big for me. Uh, I could wear it if I wanted to, but it is a chunk. It's darn big. Maybe if I wore it higher up on my wrist, but there's no denying that it is a fine looking watch. Blue being my favorite color, uh, it seems to work perfectly as they pull it through to the strap and on the dial hands. And now here's the Gas Limo Auto at, what was this one, 45 millimeters. It's not too tremendous. I would pull it off. Like I said, though, I wear watches that are too big for me often because uh, I don't care what everyone else thinks. I just care what I think. Uh, but it looks good. It's styling. It's a nice dress watch for sure. This has been Mark from LongIslandWatch.com showing you some Vostok Europe watches. Please like this video if you enjoyed it. Please subscribe to our channel if you have not done so yet. If you have any questions or comments, Please put them down below and I'll be sure to address them as soon as I can. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.